Okay, folks, welcome back. Now, in this lesson, uh, we're going to be going through the general compositing process after you have done rendering and, uh, you know, put your files inside After Effects and do some, some color correction, some depth of field and stuff like that. And in the next lesson, we will be talking about the animated light, if you remember inside Cinema 4D, that we had uh, them animated uh, on our signs using a line spline tag. We are going to be getting those lights uh, back into After Effects and try to make something with them inside After Effects. But in this lesson, we're just going to talk about the general compositing process. So after the render is finished, it really depends on your preference and how you save your files. But for me, I have a folder uh, for uh, each of my cameras. For example, this is the camera 10 120 87 142. This is the old render uh, that I have for this project, not the new render. I actually didn't render this, uh, so I just uh, I can use this data here. And uh, each folder contains the renders, the AEC file, which is the compositing project file from Cinema 4D for After Effects. And I have multipass in this folder, and also I create a folder for my multipass to be separated sometimes. Uh, but generally speaking, it's a uh, good idea to have your render and your multipass in one single folder so the AEC file can much more easier uh, find them and get those data back into After Effects. So you select their, your AEC file and click on import and those data will be imported inside After Effects and you're gonna have something like this, your uh, depth map and your uh, main pass, main beauty pass, you got a, you're gonna have a composition containing all the data and lights and stuff like that. In this uh, case, I just deleted everything because I just want the camera and my two passes, okay? So, uh, and if it wasn't, uh, you know, like this and it wasn't working, you just can go ahead and import your uh, files and footages uh, directly into After Effects. Uh, just uh, a few uh, consideration, maybe and the first thing is the uh, composition uh, that's imported from the AEC file is exactly has the frame rate that you have defined in uh, Cinema 4D in your project setting, which is 24. Make sure your uh, files, uh, your footages, your path is having the exact same frame rate. If you see some of them have maybe another frame rate, simply select your uh, file footage and click on this uh, uh, file here and then you can go ahead and change the uh, frame rate for this uh, particular uh, footage and this way you're gonna have a, a really easier time uh, and otherwise you are gonna really uh, try to figure out what's the problem but maybe the most uh, obvious issue is to try to make sure your frame rates are exactly the same for all of your data so this is the first thing we're gonna be doing and I have uh, the camera and you can see the nice thing we have the 3d camera so if we add a 3d layer uh, the it will match with the camera and we can simply go ahead and add our uh, layers and it will be very nice and uh, completely uh, uh, very nice match because everything is uh, based on this camera movement so let me go ahead and do some stuff the first thing I want to do obviously is to go ahead and uh, add the background because uh, if you go to the uh, alpha here you can see we uh, have this uh, obvious alpha that's because actually our uh, depth of field if I turn off the depth of field you can see the alpha from our main render is like this these parts are opaque and these parts are uh, semi-transparent and you can go ahead and apply your background really easily so let me uh, get back to my RGB for the background, I'm going to be using uh, Element 3D here. So uh, I use it for a background sometimes, uh, you know, uh, because you can use HDRI inside Element 3D and just using that. And we have this HDRI background in Cinema 4D, but we didn't render it and we just rendered the alpha channel. Okay, so uh, I use it a lot to actually go ahead and create some backgrounds. And because it is a 3D plugin, basically, you can go ahead and have the background nicely matched with your camera. So let me show you how I do that. The first thing is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new solid control NY and I'm gonna name it BG for the background or whatever you want. I'm gonna put it down there. And the next thing, uh, let me turn off the caps lock, is to uh, import the uh, HDRI that you have. I just imported it here. This is the file. If you double click on this, this is the file that we have here. And then uh, I'm going to uh, simply put this thing in the background and turn it off. 
and then I'm going to apply the element 3d effect to my solid here so uh, this is a new installation of element 3d and it gives me some headache and I have to see what's the uh, problem with this so uh, after you imported your element 3d I'm not gonna do anything with it I'm just gonna use it for the background so I'm gonna go to the render setting go to the environment now you can define your environments for me is this studio blur.png and then turn on the show in BG and as you can see now you have this nice background which is absolutely matched with your uh, in, uh, camera movement look at this cool stuff huh and you can go ahead and simply uh, let's see open up the uh, rotate environment and really rotate it the way you like and uh, have some nice motion as you see very nice cool stuff so now we have this nice render and nice environment here which is quite nice uh, so the next thing I am going to do is to let's see is to apply the depth of field so let me show you what we can do I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and rename it uh, depth here so let's name it depth and I'm going to uh, show you two methods in order to do that maybe the first thing I'm going to do is actually to pre-compose my depth uh, layer this is the depth layer that we have look at this which is very faint and just a hint of this white color that we have doesn't matter I'm gonna uh, uh, go ahead and actually control shift C to create a uh, pre-compose here let's see name it depth and, uh, make sure move all attributes into the new composition is turned on click OK now you can go ahead to this composition and if I open it up you can see we have just this really small amount of depth of field I want to add a curve here to make sure it's a bit more strong so let's go ahead and apply a curve to the layer here and I'm going to just make sure it is a bit more strong something like this okay get back to our main file go to the depth map I'm gonna be uh, showing you two methods one of them using plugin and one of them using a native After Effects plugin so the first thing uh, is go ahead and uh, type in depth of field this plugin is from Frisch Loft uh, and you can go ahead and apply the depth of field to your uh, depth adjustment layer the first thing is to you have to define the uh, depth map which is this one and then increase the radius there we go and then you go ahead and define your uh, focus point where you want the focus to be I want to just go ahead and go down here and increase the blur so you can see what's going on now you can see this part is in focus and this part is in the uh, quite it's quite blurry here and it's really nice it's very quick uh, compared to the camera lens blur effects in After Effects which I'm going to show you in a moment so you can go ahead and basically animate this and really work on it the way you want and go get some nice effect I'm going to just go a bit crazy about the amount of blur here and as you can see we have this very nice render and this is how you go ahead and add the uh, depth of field effects and you can go and uh, really uh, decide how you want the effect to be you can go ahead and change your uh, focus point or focal point and as you can see now the uh, focus is in here and all the parts down here are getting quite blurry now this is how to use the uh, depth of field uh, from Frischloft and I'm gonna just go ahead and disable this for a um, moment and you can go ahead and apply the uh, camera lens blur which is uh, let's see there we go here's the camera lens blur I'm going to apply it to my depth map the first thing you need to do is to define your depth layer here so let's go ahead to depth and uh, if I go ahead and increase, increase the blur radius now there you go just this is much more slower than the Frisch loft effect as you can see it's taking even though we went a bit crazy 500 is too much and I hope it won't crash the after effects let's go ahead to something like maybe 100 
there we go now here you have the effect i i guess uh just flush left is much more nicer and much more quicker so that's why people try to use this so that is very very cool and that's about uh, this so i'm going to turn off uh, or delete the camera lens blur and enable the uh, foolish loft again so that's about it then i'm gonna go ahead and simply uh, create a new uh, adjustment layer and this is gonna be our general color correction i'm gonna just uh, simply add a curve here and also, I'm going to add um, hue and saturation here. So let's go ahead and apply that. For the um, curve, I'm going to just make it a bit brighter, just generally speaking here. And as you can see, I'm having a, um, oh, there we go. This is not too bad, I think. Let's turn it off. Uh, yeah, I like it to be a bit brighter. So turn it off and on, maybe a bit more even. And I'm going to my hue and saturation and desaturate the whole scene, just a touch. There you go. And uh, we have this nice render here. I'm just going to the uh, depth of field here and change the uh, depth here to be, uh, actually I'm going to focus it on here. Now the nice thing is you can actually animate the uh, focal point of your uh, depth of field effect. So if I go ahead and uh, let me go down here, click on the focal point, maybe go uh, 10 frame shift page down. And now you can go ahead and change the focal point to be about here. Okay, now in 10 frame, the focal points basically shifts to be from here to be here. So if I just uh, go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and hit B in here and N here and just go ahead uh, to see. It's going to take a bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and smaller make uh, the... Now you can see and the 10 frame is very, let me go ahead, just to increase this. Now that's what we have here. And now in here, there you go. Let's go ahead and play this part back and see what we're going to get. Uh, I'm running a few softwares, recorders and audition and stuff like that, so that's why now you can see the focal point at the beginning of the clip is in here and at the uh, uh, when the uh, clip finishes it goes down up there and you can see this nice uh, change and this nice shift of focal point really it's a really nice effect that you can simply achieve it using the uh, Fourish Loft uh, Depth of Field plugin. So that was another uh, tip if you want to use it in this case I'm just going to actually go ahead and delete it and just change my focal point to here. Uh, that is another thing. And I think uh, we're kind of covered for a lot of parts. And this is generally speaking how you do uh, the really uh, quick compositing and make your uh, thing look nicer. I mean, you can go ahead and add some nice blur to your highlights and stuff like that, which will be beyond the grasp of this tutorial. Uh, because uh, we have been talking a lot uh, about compositing in our next in our uh, previous premium course and we're going to be talking about more and in more advanced courses but I think this is enough for the moment now in the next lesson as I said we're going to be uh, importing our data from cinema 4d from uh, uh, cinema 4d the light the animated light that we had and I'm going to show you how to do some nice stuff uh, with those uh, information that you generate inside cinema 4d and uh, that would be our last lesson so see you there